Okay, so I've now uh, put the, the Zone 1Z in between my two mixers, uh, which are right. So I'm just going to plug it straight in. Um, there's one plug around the back, like so. And the other plug I'm going to put into this USB card here. And let's have a look at the PC. So the PC says it's found a USB composite device. And it says Zone MIDI device, USB audio device. It's going to go on and on and on. And apparently that's it now, ready to use. Okay, so uh, I'm going to fire up Ableton Live now at this point. I should point out that uh, I've currently been using uh, another MIDI controller at this point, so I might have to do a little bit of reconfiguration, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what Ableton Live uh, finds in terms of MIDI devices. So here we go. Uh, going go to the options menu, down to preferences. Okay, it's the Allen Heath, but I, I really know it's probably the last one to appear there. Um, so I'm going to turn off uh, the track uh, input because I don't want to use that just now. I'm going to turn on remoting uh, so I can use the, the Allen Heath Zone one d to remote control my Ableton sets. Uh, I'm going to close the option. Uh, so first thing I guess I'm going to do is go into MIDI map mode. Uh, so to do that I press Control n and the screen will go blue. There we go. And I'm going to choose uh, two faders um, from each of my, my four main channels. So I'm going to start with this one here. And uh, I'll zoom in there. Start with that one there. And I'm going to move the first fader down here on my own Keith Zone 1D. Uh, and right enough, we find that Hilton Life has detected it. So I mean, that's actually going to be the easiest uh, installation I've ever done. Um, it just works out the box, no problem. So I'm going to continue to map a few more controls now. Okay, I've now set up a few mappings. Uh, as you might be able to see, there's a couple there. Uh, there's also some playing stop buttons there, and there, and then some more favorites there. I've also got a couple of beat repeats that I frequently use. Um, so I have literally just two controls at the moment. I can maybe add some more later. That's one there, and that's the other one there. Um, so the way I've got this mapped out, roughly speaking, on the Zone 1D, I have the four faders controlling uh, four of the on-screen channels, um, buttons on Ableton Live, and the second row are clip stop buttons. Um, the third row I've not used yet. Um, moving up to the top of the controller, um, I have the, the four push button functions of the, the rotary knobs here, um, assigned to my beat repeat effects, or what I'm going to do, I should say. Uh, we can see the MIDI options again. And I'm going to turn on the remoting for output um, for the output device. Um, now you'll have to bear with me if I get the wrong one the first time. But let's assume it's USB audio device 2, just as it was up here. Um, so I'm going to say OK to that. And uh, now you'll see here I've got you'll see here I've got two channels on the left there. Um, there's one, there's the other, and I flick on the Q button. So now I'm going to do that again, and this time I'm going to watch the Zone 1D. But sadly, nothing's happened. Let's try it the other way around. Perhaps if I push the buttons here, nope, nothing happens. So maybe that's another, uh, another thing Alan Heath could do to, to upgrade the Zone 1D. Uh, they could make it respond to messages. Um, they might have just got you with live configured wrongly there. In which case, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, I'd maybe like to comment a bit further actually on this button pressing. I've just been experimenting and I uh, just realised that you can press combinations of buttons here um, and Ableton Live will quite happily select uh, multiple channels to key on. Uh, for example, here we can see uh, two channels queued at the same time. Um, but if I keep on fiddling around with these buttons until I um, you know, until I change uh, how this works, it's actually quite misleading on the controller as to what's uh, queued on the screen. So I've got nothing illuminated there, or it's on the screen. I have one there, and oops, I've got two channels there which are both uh, uh, queued up. Uh, sorry, which are both set to to, to queue. Um, so uh, that's a little bit annoying, perhaps, perhaps uh, dangerous. Um, okay, so perhaps I'm going to see now if I can change the mapping, change the mode, not the mapping. <laughs> Bear with me.
Okay, uh, I've just read the instructions and apparently the default mapping is in fact uh, Ableton Live mode. Um, so I'm going to have to do some more reading up on that myself. Uh, maybe I misread something on the website or it just didn't apply to this particular model. Um, but certainly I think this, this issue with the key buttons is slightly annoying. Uh, but I'm not going to bother changing the mapping just now. Uh, I think that's a futile waste of time. Um, okay. Right, I'd now like to comment on the build quality of the Zone 1D. Um, as it's made by Alan Heath, it is of course absolutely perfect. Um, first of all, one of the things I'd like to look at are, are this uh, jog wheel. So one review I read about the jog wheels on, on all the Zone 1D, 2D and 3D is that uh, they, um, they have these micro switches. You could put four arrows and you're clicking there. And, uh, that can be um, apparently problematic when you're using this jog wheel. However, I've got to say, to be honest, it's really, really firm. Let me give you a side on view there. I can barely uh, I can make it rock slightly, but I think I'd have to put quite a lot of force to actually get to click that micro switch. So I don't think there's any chance whatsoever of me going below. I don't think there's any chance whatsoever of me actually going, of me accidentally pushing micro switches while, while uh, turning the, the wheel here. Um, next up we've got all the buttons here, I suppose they're absolutely perfect, I mean they, they feel good, they feel like you, they feel like they, they, they feel like, um, what's the word, <laughs> they feel like they're, they're, they're being pushed when you push them, there's no uncertainty, uh, whereas some of our, our buttons on other products you find, uh, you push it and you're never quite sure if it's actually, uh, actually registered with the machine itself, which is of course poor user interface. Faders are nice and smooth. Um, these uh, pots here have a, a center position, which is also another good user interface feature. Uh, and then, of course, these these feel great. The the click there is nice and definitive, so you can be sure exactly how many uh, how many spaces you're clicking. Maybe a little bit too fine. Perhaps some some bigger spacing between the clicks would be be preferable, but I don't think that's a major a major thing. And of course, the button feature there is very very definitive so I don't think you can ever be unsure that you're you're not pushing it correctly okay okay um, well, I think I've pretty much uh, done everything I need to do in the hardware um, I should really just stress at this point that the setup was extremely easy uh, and apparently I'm running out of battery uh, so I'm not going to get some tunes on but I think that's me ready to go